So as far as approaching vendor access into crucial critical systems, what's usually the best way to approach that um, and guidelines to follow? Yeah, so, um, and I'm gonna get a little draw crazy here. So say this is your, this is your corporation and your, um, your access, and this is your vendor. The best thing that you want to do, and this vendor has a solution that's on your floor here, right? But then you as a company have tons of other data, maybe you even have a DMZ with uh, you know, web access, but you have a vendor that's um, supporting a system internal to your organization. You really wanna start figuring out how do you segment one, their access, so that first, this system kind of stands on its own little island inside of the network or inside of the access, however that is. First, reduce the attack surface, right? Reduce the footprint or the access for that system or that application to something that doesn't allow for anyone else to really have to access it that doesn't need to, right? Need to know. HR doesn't need to access the building control system for the lighting and the heating in the, in the company. They don't need to do that. Finance doesn't need to do that. There's no reason. So segment that going both ways. Two, um, you know, from this system, this system shouldn't have to be able to access the HR systems, the finance systems, right? This vendor system, say it's a building management system for, um, uh, you, you know, for, for heating, right? And lighting inside of a building. Um, and so you want to kind of segment it going both ways. Two, you want to now, now that you've segmented that, right? And you've controlled the access to that from a, from a kind of a, a networking standpoint. Now you want to make sure that the access to that system is only being done by the people who need to. So this vendor that you have, right, should, when they access into to manage this system, should only be able to touch this system or this application alone. And you want to ensure that you have some level of MFA, you wanna have some type of username, password requirement on that access so that you don't have somebody else off here able to access that system, right, that you know unintended, right? So you want to now control and make sure that this vendor is the one that's able to access that system, and it is that vendor and that vendor alone. So that's usually done through multi-factor authentication um, and some type of user uh, username and password, right? So that's a combination that you want to have there. The last thing that you want to probably do is be monitoring for this type of um, activity, right? So you want to have some type of monitoring that's going on that can tell, okay, you know, Jim, you know, at the building management, um, you know, support, right? That was Jim. They came in. Jim always comes in from this IP or this DNS name, right? He always comes in from here. He accesses over there. We're looking for anomalies, and he always comes in and accesses this system. So when suddenly, Jim's account is used, and now Jim's account is starting to start work its way around the infrastructures, trying to talk to HR, trying to talk to whatever. You've got a management or a set of monitoring capability that can look for that ab abnormality or that maybe possibly malicious activity, and you can, you know, effectively start some type of incident response and shut that down. So these kind of all of these components are are what make up a really good security program. Um, so you want to be able to control and segment, you wanna be able to control the access and the uh, uh, authorization and the authentication, and then you wanna be able to monitor for when things go outside of that baseline.